This is my town, San Francisco. My name is Barney Runson. I'm a lieutenant in the plainclothes squad, badge 28. This story is about me and a fellow I knew, Danny Gannon. Dan had a racket and lots of customers. Being a cop, I never saw eye to eye with Danny on a lot of things. But on some things, we saw heart to heart. Well, it was a nice sunny day. Hello, Mr. Hilton. I haven't seen you in a couple of weeks. May I help you today? I hope you can. Excuse me a moment. I'll have to check this. Sure. We can take care of you, Mr. Hilton. Thank you. Anything else? I've got some new shirts. No, thanks. Maybe after 4 o'clock, I'll be glad to have this one. Where are you going to be later? Uh, I've got to talk to you. I'm just leaving for the track. All right, I'll see you there. Miss Lawrence, tell her I'm on my way over to pick her up. Yes, Mr. Gannon. Oh, Mr. Gannon. Yes? Would you place a $5 bet for me on Johnny Come Lately in the third? Don't bet on horses, Lucille. It's a sucker's game. Not ready yet, Robbie? You don't give a girl much notice. Got any good tips today? I never mix business with pleasure. Come on, you can put the rest of that stuff on in the car. We'll miss the first race. The way you're rushing me, you think I was running in it. place in the world to put a hat on right. You're doing fine. Well? Hmm. It's nice. Ought to be. Cost sixty-seven fifty. Mm, it's quite expensive. Come to think of it, so is the rest of you. How does a girl with two horses which haven't finished with the money in four months do it? I didn't think you were that sensitive about your horses. Robbie, what's the matter? I'm sorry. It's funny how you can have a great deal of money and still be left with so little. You passed me. You don't know much about me, Dan. You've had laughs. And you're sweet. I had a husband, a swell fellow. When the war caught up with us, he ran with a lot of other swell fellows and got killed. I have nothing but what he left me. Um, I'm sorry, Robin. I have a feeling I'm going to win today. That's the kind of feeling that keeps me in business. Two weeks off with pay. Who can kick? 
Where did you go? I drove up to Lake Tahoe with a fistful of detective stories. Between reading and fishing, I had a pretty good time. I haven't read a detective story in five years. You know, I didn't guess right once. They got a lot of smart detectives in those books. Is this a social call? Well, uh... I thought you didn't come here just to tell me about the books you read. Come on in and sit down. Thanks. Dan, you know how I run my beat. No trouble, no noise. I like to keep it that way. You always have. Somebody making trouble for you? About what? Still fishing, Barney? I hear some of your friends in the investment business over in Oakland and Richmond have been organized. You know, the old protection racket. I haven't heard about it. I've been hearing a piece here, a piece there. Adds up to some pretty interesting conversation. Hmm. Bad news travels fast. It'll catch up with me, Barney. Just thought you might like to know what's happening in your business. It's probably conversation. I hope so. I work hard enough. Almost a million people in this town pushing one another around all the time. There's enough work to keep a cop busy. You don't look overworked. I don't want to take on any more at the present time. But I smell trouble in the air, Dan. You and I know how these guys operate. And when they get to you, you're not going to hold still for it. I can take care of myself. That's exactly what I mean. You've been away. You haven't heard everything. I'm stepping out of the business. And I think I met the right girl. Well, well that's good news. It's kind of sudden, though, isn't it? I mean, about the girl. Well, that's the way things happen. You go on a vacation, and I meet a nice girl. I'll be catching it any day now. Well, that sure makes my job a lot easier. Good luck to you, Dan. Thanks. Oh, I, uh... Got a tip in the third. Another dollar here. So yeah, here it is. You, you want to handle this, or shall I put it in the machines? Take a bet? Me? That's against the law. I'm sorry, Dan. Well, did you come to spend the afternoon with me or with your horse? Oh, there was some question as to whether he should wear blinkers or not. Well, aren't you going to stay a while? I can't now. I've got to make my bet. Oh, you got the winner, huh? Oh, I hope so. I'll be back as soon as I can. All right. Oh, I beg your pardon. Hi, Dan. Hello, Harold. Any people call on you lately? What kind of people? People with muscles. No. Our old friend Barney was just talking to me. He was looking for some information. There must be something in the wind. There is. I got a protection gag pulled on me this morning. They want to protect me for a healthy cut every week. We've been doing all right without protection. That's the way I feel. Say anything about me? No. How rough did they get? They just talked. Made promises. I told them to hike. They'll be back. I'll keep in touch with you, let you know what happens. Where will you be later? Where you'll be later? At the club. It opens tonight. I'll be there. You better be. I got my dough invested. I'll pick you up on the way down. It's a deal. Well, I made my bet. Oh, uh, this is Hal Towers. This is Robbie. Robbie Lawrence. How do you do? Yeah, I heard tell about you. I heard tell about you, too. Robbie's got one going in the next race. Hopscotch. You gonna run in the money? I told the jockey to go to the front and stay there. Who's going to tell the horse? <laughs> well, it's nothing like confidence. I made a bet on it, and you've got half of it. Ten dollars worth. Hopscotch is a horse who has trouble carrying his jockey, let alone your sawbuck. Well, if he can't beat those other horses, I'm going to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with him that he won't enjoy. He'll whinny, and you'll melt. <laughs> well, I'll see you tonight. Save your coupons. Goodbye, Robbie. Robbie Lawrence. Bye. How do you like it? I like it fine. I hope the customers do. I was like a clown in clover. Oh, and that first kiss. Mm. That's the time that you took over. If someone wants to try those love seats, we reverse. Dan, 
down. Hi, sis. Hello. Hello. Hello, Robbie. Hello, Elaine. If you have anything more to do, don't let us stop you. Oh, I'm glad somebody stopped me. Oh, you look great. Well, you saw part of it. Do we get the job? You got it, honey. If Waterville ever comes back, we'll kill it again. Oh, I didn't help keep it alive. Used to do a little hoofing myself. Yes, but she doesn't have to dance anymore for a living. She's a whiz at the racetrack. We want a cool dollar and a half this afternoon. Have your money. I think we'll run along now that you kids go back to work because it takes her hours to dress. Dan, I hope I don't let you down tonight. You never have, sis. Thanks. We'll see you tonight, huh, Dan? Yes. Bye-bye. Well, come on. So long, Rob. So long. Good luck. Wanted again at nine o'clock. Put the top up, will you please? Yes, sir. You can have the rest of the evening off, Lee. Thank you, Mr. Gannon. on the second floor. Yes, sir. Who is it? It's Danny. Hey. Hiya. Aren't you dressed yet? No, come on in here. It's been quite a while since I wore this monkey suit. I forgot to pick it up at the cleaners, so I had to go back and get it. Say, have you heard anything more from those guys? They're not going to get any place. You know, I'm getting out of the business. Why don't you get out of it, too? You got plenty of good reasons for getting out of it. You got a girl. Tonight your club's open. Alla, I'll give you a piece of the club. And there's some other things that you might be interested in. Thanks, Dan. But you know, a long time ago, over in the Mission District, a bunch of kids were playing ball. One of the kids was running for first base. He never made it. A truck got him, ran over his leg. I don't like long stories. Oh, wait, wait. Let me finish. This kid with a banged up leg spent a long time in the hospital. Another kid, his best friend, kept coming to see him. Every day, kept helping him. And when the leg used to hurt a lot, this friend would say, stay with it. That was a long time ago. Lots of things are a long time ago. And then when this kid with the bad leg got out of the hospital, Whenever he needed help, whenever anybody started to push him around, his friend was always there. I know the story of your life, Hal. Come on, it's getting late. I gotta pick up Robbie. Oh, look, I'll be a little wild, Dan. I gotta shave. I'll wait for you. We can ride over together. I'll hop a cab. I'll be over in a few minutes. Okay. Stay with it. Why am I in the sky when I ought to be walking around on the ground down where I belong? Who am I to deny that I'm out of my mind? You would have to be blind not to see that something's wrong. Reason is not hard to guess, so I'll just break down and confess. I'm in a jam with baby. Baby won't talk to me. Looks like. 
think someone has been lying. I guess a friend of mine is trying, trying to take my baby from me. Obviously, they're jealous. I'm so in love with baby. But I I don't know where I am. I only know that I'm in jail. What's on your mind, Dan? Hell. Isn't he going to be here? He's supposed to be. I, I can't understand. Will you excuse me, honey? I, I'll go and call him. All right. Hello again. What do you want? Like a gentleman. Let's go. Might be important. It might be. Get going. Stay with it. We'll go out the back way. I don't want to talk to anybody. I told you once how I feel about this thing. We've done enough talking. Now we want you to walk. You're dumb not to come in with us. You're wasting your time. That's what the boss figured. I didn't see him go. Thanks very much. Did you find the missing link? Oh, no answer. If you're so worried about him, why don't you run over to your papa and check? I don't want to leave you alone. Oh, I don't mind. I can go backstage and talk to Elaine. Thanks. Hello. Hello, Bonnie. Hello, Miss Lawrence, Lieutenant Brunson. You must be that nice girl that Danny told me about. Oh, thank you. Nice to know you. Won't you come in and join us? Thanks. How would you like to do me a favor, Bonnie? And keep this nice girl company for a few minutes. Well, where are you running to? I'm not running any place. I'm just looking for somebody. Excuse me, honey. You know, that's a coincidence. I'm looking for somebody, too. 
How about you? You looking for somebody? No. Well, look, I'll tell you what you do. You keep an eye on everything, and we'll both be right back, okay? <laughs> I bet we're looking for the same somebody. Maybe. You know, Dan Howe's a friend of mine, too. I know that, Barney. I can't understand what's keeping him. I called the apartment and there was no answer. You going up there? Yes. Mind if I go with you? Come along. you anymore. Well, if I can do anything, go back to the desk. Come on. what you're thinking, and I'm telling you, stay out of it. This is my job now. Maybe if you and Towers could have seen it my way and called a cop, this wouldn't have happened. Don't interfere, Dan. I won't like it. What are you eating? Just coffee. Coffee. Do you mind if I use this chair? Not at all. Thank you. Where were you tonight? Sorry, Dan. We couldn't get to the club. You know, Ethel's expecting a baby. She don't like clubs right now. So I took her to a movie. What kind of movie? Mystery. I like mystery pictures. This was about a fellow who had some kind of a business. Another guy wanted to move in on him. This fellow wouldn't let him move in. So you know what happened? They found him dead. At the bottom of a flight of steps. Who did it? Well, we left just then. I didn't like the picture anymore. If you were in this fella's place, what would you have done? In the movie? I wouldn't let the movie in on me either. It's good to hear you feel that way about movies. guys I ever knew. There's something you're not telling me. Telling doesn't do any good. I love you, Dad. I don't want anything to happen to you. Nothing will. This whole thing centers around your business, doesn't it? Towers never fell down that flight of steps. Then let Bonnie run some handles. That's his job. Now, don't you get all upset about it. Well, how can I help it? I want to... Now, honey, you better get a good night's sleep.
Yes? Hello? Hello, Frankie. Fifteen thousand, huh? Look, Frankie. Lay it off with Phil. I'm not taking anything today. You understand? All right. Lucille, no more calls. I'm not into anybody. There's nothing new on a grapevine. This is the cool-off period. I thought by now the cops would know all about it. These things take time. He comes along, Arm. Lemon. Hiya, fellas. Hiya. Check. I'm not breaking up anything, am I? Nothing. We'll keep in touch with it, Dan. Okay. Thank you. What kind of ice cream you got? Vanilla or chocolate? Give me some of each. Okay, Mr. Gannon. You can't buy me off with two flavors of ice cream. I'm not trying. What's on your mind? Well, I can't get anybody to talk to me. I'm talking to you. Yeah, but you're not saying anything. What would you like to hear? You know a lot more than you're telling me. We've been friends a long time, but you never heard me blow a whistle. What's so wrong with a whistle? It's not accepted in my set. <coughs> Thanks. Dan, you and I both know you're going to get a call. When it comes, I want you to tell me about it. Don't give me orders, Barney. Oh, you guys are all alike. You think a badge is poison. I just like to do things my own way. Sure. Somebody knocked off Hal. Now you're going to find out who did it and knock him off. And they'll get somebody to knock you off. And then some of your friends will knock them off. First thing you know, everybody will be knocked off. And I'll be out of a job. You'll have more time to read detective stories. Brush off, huh? I'm a busy man. I thought you were getting out of this business. Dan. You can control this situation. The boys look to you. If you get rough, they will too. Why not do it my way, the right way? I promise you that Hal will be squared. Your ice cream's melting. Two different flavors. Good night, Jimmy. Good evening, Mr. Gannon. My name is Mason. This is Mr. Walters. How do you do, Mr. Gannon? How do you do? Your houseboy was kind enough to let us in. I hope I didn't keep you waiting too long. Not at all. Please, be seated. Thank you. Mr. Walters and I, we dropped in on a matter we thought would interest you. I usually discuss business at my office. Well, business of this kind, we talk about at home. To be quite frank with you, Mr. Gannon, we're selling something. Now, what we're selling is the equivalent of an annuity. You know, life insurance? What uh, company are you with? Oh, it's not a well-known concern, sir. It's new. But we're going after business in a big way. It's too good to miss. What we're offering is a personal protection policy. Sounds very interesting. It would be almost foolish not to take an interest. You see, this guarantees your being able to keep on with your business. It covers automobiles hitting you, open elevator shafts, accidents around the house, falling downstairs, all sorts of things. You'd be surprised how many policies of this type of insurance we've been writing. I can imagine. It's a real protection. It works on a percentage of the amount of business you do each day. Well, the sum would hardly be noticed by a man with your type of operation, Mr. Gannon. But if you didn't subscribe, uh, it might prove embarrassing. Well, you see, Mr. Mason and I are trying to win the monthly award for the most business. Your proposition does sound very interesting. Suppose you let me sleep on it, and I'll contact you tomorrow. Oh, we'll get in touch with you. We're go-getters, Mr. Gannon. Well, I won't be hard to find. I'll be in my office all day and then at the turf club until midnight. 
Is that plain enough? Oh, yes. Very plain, Mr. Gannon. Good night, sir. Good night. Good night, Mr. Gannon. Good night. Good morning. Good afternoon. Any calls? Nothing yet. What a coincidence. I came up here to see you, and here you are. Step inside. You forgot to say hello. 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 Now, what's on your mind? Nothing. Did you uh, hear anything? No, uh, you told me to lay off. You sure you haven't heard anything from anyone? No, nothing. <laughs> I haven't even opened my mail. A lot of new faces in town. Some we got pegged, others we can't make so far. You'll have to excuse me, Bonnie. I have to take care of my business. That's all right with me. Be sure you don't chisel in on my business. Yes? The gentleman here to see you. Ask him to wait. Of course, you'll let me know if any strange characters try to contact you. Sure. Yeah, sure. Wait a minute, Dan. I know you like to operate alone. But these guys are rats. Lice. Why don't you let me handle them? Save it, Bonnie. Okay, Dan. I'll be seeing you. Come in, gentlemen. Just make yourself comfortable. I've been thinking your proposition over. And I might be able to influence some of the other boys, perhaps uh, a group rate. But I'd like to talk to the general manager. That's why I'm glad you dropped in. We're glad we did too, Mr. Cannon. For another reason. What's that? We don't care to make our service available to anyone who does business with policemen. Now, gentlemen, a lot of people come in to see me. Some of them are welcome and some of them aren't. We like to check up a little closer on our clients. later. What a coincidence. You're a very nosy fellow. As a matter of fact, I was just going in for a... Uh... Pedicure? Yeah, yeah, feet. You're going downstairs? That's just where I was going. The man won't be back for an hour, they say. Come on, I'll teach you to a ride. Thanks. Those uh, fellows who just came out of your office, friends of yours? They had some extra cash to invest and wanted a little advice. I see. When he passes by, you can hear them sigh. I wish he were mine. From the tip of his toes to the tip of his nose, he's every chick's pride and joy. Got a knockout style and the cutest smile. Love that boy with his baby blue eyes and his droopy bow ties. He's king of the hyperloy. I don't know what he's got, but he's got a lot. Chicks all call him a writer of jazz. They would nominate him for chief of state. But he'd rather be righteous than be president. He just is what he is. The technique is all his. Boy, is the real McCoy. Did you hear me say? Please reiterate. Ooh, love that boy. What a gal, what a chick, what a cute little trick. Queen of any neighborhood. Beauty may be cheap, may be just skin deep, but 
lot on her it looks good From the tip of her toes to her pert little nose She's good for a guy's morale Every charm and grace in the proper place Love that gal She makes Lana look tame and puts Venus to shame Affects you like alcohol She's a dream that talks and a dream that walks Well, hello Love that doll She's the chassis He's the classiest The answer to any maiden's prayer But to make it tough And brother, this is rough I hear that her father's a millionaire Let's pack a police, get a justice of peace As long as we both agree And refer our cause to Niagara Falls They look cute together. Don't they? I think they're going to make it permanent. Really? Hello, Ravi. Hello, sis. Hello, Hello, Barney. Pull up a chair. Well, I, uh, I don't know. I got that pedicure. Don't tell me you came here to dance. That was exactly my intention. Miss Gannon, could you recommend a good partner? Be careful, Mike. She's had a crush on him ever since she's been two feet high. <laughs> well, I'm a little tired. But how can I resist? You see? Excuse me? Hmm? You know, if we have cops for customers, it's going to give this dive a bad reputation. Mike, if you can find somebody to dance with... I can have a nice little talk with Rob. Uh... That's very good. <laughs> kind of look like Cesar Romero to handle this kind of music. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we haven't danced in about five years. Uh, it's been a long time. Things have changed. You've grown up. Danny's getting richer. And I'm getting prettier by the minute. You're worried about Dan. Why? You know why. He won't listen to me. I'm the fellow with the badge. He likes me, but he doesn't like my job. You're his sister, Elaine. You can help me if you will. What do you want me to do? Nothing you have a right to do. Talk to Dan. Tell him to let me find out what happened to Hal. Because if he gets in too deep, I may not be able to get him out. I'll try. Bonnie, I'll really try. If you can manage a rumble with me, you can do anything. <laughs> Dan, I, I want so much to enjoy myself. I can't. I'm worried. Worry's bad for you. If you're working with Runson on this, whoever killed Hal, if you're right about that, is going to go after you. What makes you think I'm working with Runson? I didn't say you were, darling, but... He's been with you so much lately, and... Well, I just have a feeling that you're so intent about Hal's death that... Barney's a friend of mine. He was a friend of Hal's. He's only trying to even things his way. I just wish he'd try to forget the whole thing. It's Barney's job. He'll do it. Please don't get mixed up with it. I want to tell you something, Robbie. I like my best girl beautiful. Like you. I like her near me. Like you. But I can't stand her nagging. I'm sorry. Have you read any good books lately? You say, old boy, is she under arrest or can we get ready for our next number? Well, that's up to Barney. I'll release you at his custody. <laughs> Thanks, Barney. See you later. Okay. You don't have to bother to take me up, Dan. I'd rather you wouldn't. All right, honey. Good night, and don't worry.
Good night. Good night, Mr. Dillon. Hiya, Gannon. Get in the car. The general manager wants to see you. It took him long enough to make up his mind. Don't make me nervous. You were born nervous. Get in. I trust you, boys. Yeah, but we don't trust you. Fix him up. This is where you black out. Guy, could you? The blindfold stays on. Let's go. In case you don't recognize what that is, Mr. Gannon, it's a gun. And if you're foolish enough to rip that blindfold off, you'll be shot. Would you like a cigarette? How am I going to smoke it? Very good. Let's make this meeting short and sweet. You know, I'd like to take this off and get a good look at you just once. But I don't want you to. Mr. Gannon? I like to do business in an orderly fashion. My men approach you like gentlemen with a sound proposition. You told the police. I have two rules. I don't tell the police anything and I don't pay off for protection. You're going to have to break one of your rules, Gannon. Now I realize you have a lot of influence with the bookies around town. But you're coming into this thing my way or else you may wish you had retired. Now I know who killed Towers. He didn't see things my way. I don't like men who upset my plans. Even when I was a youngster and the other kids played marbles, I ran the game. Catching cold? Yeah. Maybe I shouldn't stay out so late at night. It is getting late. And the later it gets, the thinner my patience wears. It's been rather pleasant, Gannon. But now we wind it up. There's only one thing I'm interested in. Either you're coming in or you're getting out. Make it easy on yourself. You're rushing me. You're in no position to make deals, but... I'll extend you that courtesy. Think it over. We'll do business yet. One way or another. Take Mr. Gannon home. seeing you. We'll take you to the door. I'm a big boy. I'm not afraid of the dark all alone. We always like to follow through on the job. So as not to disturb the neighbors, we'll go around the back. Let's not take up too much of our time, huh?
if you're thinking I'm making any noise, don't. Up we go. I see a patient, Gannon, Daniel Gannon. Gala, Gorton. Here it is, Daniel J. Gannon. That's him. I don't know if he's conscious yet. I'll probably get just as much out of him either way. <laughs> Down the hall, Lieutenant, Ward A. Thank you. Oh, such strong hands. Relax, sister. Next thing we do is sober you up. Oh. Say, Doc, what can I do for you? Oh. Excuse me, I'm a little lost. Which way is Ward A? Straight down that way. Hmm. Very nice. What, the leg? The bandage. Oh, can I help you? Yeah, this isn't the kind of a place where I like to help myself. Well, what size and shape do you want? Something in the shape of Daniel J. Gannon. I'm here on business. That shape isn't so good. I've got some better looking ones. Well, I'm afraid this one will have to do. How's he doing? Fair. Sleeping. Pleasure, ma'am. Multiple contusions and abrasions. Cots and scrapes. Supraorbital laceration right. Cut over right eye. Hematoma vertex scalp. Lump on head. Complicated. Each guy to his own record, Lieutenant. I'll take it alone from here. Uh -huh. If you need anything, let me know. Thanks. Welcome to the emergency hospital. What? No flowers? You look great. What happened to you? I fell up a flight of steps. There are more bookies in this town having trouble with steps. You're lucky you didn't get hurt. I was careful. Anything I can do for you, Dan? No, Barney. But thanks. You want to talk now? About what? About how you fell up that flight of steps? There was a cop here before. I told him it was very narrow and the lights were bad. Save your strength. Haven't you had enough? You wouldn't understand. I know Hal is dead and they muffed the job on you. I don't feel like talking. You've got a twisted sense of honor. I can't do business here. Ronnie. Yeah? There is something you can do. Just name it. You're a taxpayer. I'm a public servant. Get me out of here. I'll see what I can do. All right, Lieutenant. Come on, your bill is paid. Want me to undress you? No, I think I can make it from here. Gannon's apartment. Yeah, I just got him out of the kip, a general. 
Anything? No, I'll call you later. What do you want? Open up and I'll tell you. Come on, open up, Miss Lawrence. It's Lieutenant Runson. Come in. I never sleep. Nice place. Thank you. Now, what's the reason for this visit? Cannon. Dan? Relax. Well, what's happened to him? Well, he's got a honey of an eye and some bruises. Says he fell up a flight of steps. Don't call him. He's asleep. Who did it? He won't tell. Dan and I never do see eye to eye in things like this. I can't understand that. Well, it's not hard to understand. You see, in his business, he gets mixed up with funny kinds of people. They have a peculiar sense of honor, a code. They don't like to talk to cops. But maybe you'd like to know what's going on. I'd like to, very much. Well, it seems there's a syndicate operating in town. They're trying to muscle in on Dan's business. They probably approached him tonight, and when he refused to win with them, they beat him up. Like they did to Towers. Yeah, that's the idea. Well, it's getting late. I just wanted to let you know that he's all right. Thanks for coming, Lieutenant. That's all right, Miss Lawrence. You know, Dan and I have been friends ever since we were kids. I kind of like the guy. I do, too. That's good, because I'm trying to help him, even though he doesn't think I am. And you can help me. How? Well, if he ever mentions anything about what happened tonight, would you tell me? Of course I will. Good. He might not like it, but it's the best way. We'll keep it just between us. Swell. Good night. Ever since we met, I can't help thinking I've seen you somewhere before. Oh? I look like so many people. There aren't so many people as pretty as you. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Lieutenant. You got off lucky, Dan. You must have a twisted mind. Look at his eye. You call that lucky? All right, hold it. We've got other things to settle. Any fellows been approached? I got a phone call. Two men talked to me over near the Golden Gate Theater. What'd they have to say? Either I cut them in for 25% or else. What did you tell them? No. All the boys say that if you hold out, so do we. If you say join them, we'll join. Why don't we pick one of them up and give them a good talking to? We gotta be smarter than that. We're not a gang. No strong arm stuff. They use it. Why can't we? Pass the word along. If anybody approaches the boys and you again, tell them they got to see me. You're taking on a load, aren't you, Dan? There's a personal score I got to settle. Meet me this afternoon at the Cliff House, around 2 o'clock. Right. How's the patient this morning, Lee? Fine. He's in the bedroom, Lieutenant. Well, isn't this a nice collection? We were just going. What a coincidence. Well, don't rush off on account of me. Take it easy, Dan. Don't worry, I will. Have a good night's sleep? Great. Robbie called you? Yes, she told me you were up to see her. Thanks. What was all the activity going on around here? Can I drop you someplace? <laughs> Where were you going? Taking my sister to lunch. Good, I'll ride down with you. On me this time.
princess, you're behaving like a little girl. Without you, I am a little girl. Oh, Dan, please. You're all I've got. You're acting as if I was going to die tomorrow. Oh, Barney told me all about it. About what? About you and what you're doing. Dan, it isn't worth it. They're liable to kill you. Barney's worried, too. You liked Hal, didn't you, honey? He did a lot of things for me when I needed them. I know all about those things. But you paid him back a hundred times. There are certain things you never pay back. But you always keep trying. But what about Robbie? What about me? I love you both. Stop crying. <laughs> I'll take you back to town. Sit, you go and get the car and I'll be with you in a few minutes. Did you boys hear anything? Not a thing. Everybody is scared. Boys haven't seen anyone or heard anything. Well, keep trying. I'll meet you tonight around 8 at the tavern. Right. Wait up. You gotta help me out. Who are you paying off to? I'm deaf on one ear and I don't hear so good on the other one. I don't think you'll ever be able to ask me loud enough, Dan. There you are, sir. I wouldn't want you to have wasted your time. So, uh, have a shine on me. Thank you. <laughs> Never mind. Sorry, Dan, I still got a wife and two kids. Cutting your head up against the stone wall. It's the toughest thing I've ever been up against. I still say we should grab one. I said no. There's nothing we can do but keep our ears open. yourself today? We've been around. You know, you're a hard man on a pedicure. Did you find out anything? What did you find out? That makes us even. What a coincidence. So long, Bonnie. Wait a minute, Dan. I'll walk with you. Thanks. You're welcome. What are you tailing me for? I'm not tailing you. I'm protecting you. I'm the only reason they haven't knocked you off. You're the only reason I can't get any place. If I leave you alone, the only place you'll get is in the morgue. If I stick to you, either you're going to stay out of trouble or I'm going to get into it, which is just what I'm waiting for. I'm trying to get to the top man. It's my job. Why don't you do it? I'll stick to you. I can't get to him with you around. And they can't get to you. That leads to a dead-end street. I got plenty of time. I get paid by the month. Be careful, Bonnie. I'm liable to lose you. Look, Dan. Why don't we make the best of it? You'll go running up streets, me chasing you, but you won't lose me. It's a nice evening. Why not just walk? Inhale. Exhale. That's it. Feeling better? Yeah, it's a great place, San Francisco. We got everything. Say, how would you like a cup of the best coffee in town? Where will we get it? At the station house? <laughs> well, here's the good old Golden Gate. Ah, there's nothing like Vaudeville. You know, Vaudeville is real life people, that's why I like it. A lot of acts have played this place. I guess this is one of the few Vaudeville houses left. What's all this got to do with that coffee? Coffee? Oh, yeah. Come on backstage. I want you to meet Pop. 
He makes the coffee. He's a friend of mine. He probably used to let you in for nothing. He still does. Once you meet a friend of mine, Dan Gannett. Glad to know you, son. Glad to know you, Pop. I was telling him about how you make the best coffee in town. Well, you're just in time. Sit down. Sit down, Dan. I'll take my black, Pop. I'll have mine the same. You boys sure know your coffee. I was telling Dan about all the headliners that have played this house, Pop. Take a look at that book. I was 25 years getting that together. Every great act in show business. You know, that's a funny thing about that book, Dan. There's a picture of a guy in here. Only black mark on my record. I was supposed to pick him up six years ago. But he got away. Only pinch I ever muffed. Yeah, there he is. Take a look at him, Dan. Miss Lawrence was a blonde in those days, wasn't she? That's her husband. He got killed in the war. No. No, he didn't get killed in the war. He's still very much alive. They split up in Seattle. I'm going to get him someday. I'm not interested. Here, how about your coffee? We'll get it some other time. Thanks anyway, Pop. Dan, this is just one of the dirty jobs I have to do as a cop and a friend. Very interesting. What's the moral of that story? Ever fall in love with a girl in show business? No. I just thought you might like to have the information. Taxi. Where are you going as if I didn't know? Come along if you like. We'll straighten it out together. Miss Lawrence. Hello, Lieutenant. Darling, where have you been? I've been trying to reach you all day. I've been busy. Around. Oh, I've been so worried about you. I was told what happened. Oh, Dan, your face. It'll heal. You didn't keep your promise. I never made any. But I thought you weren't going to get mixed up in this business, Dan. It's not for you. Will you try and get some sense into his head, Lieutenant? I brought Barney along so you could get some sense into his. What do you mean, dear? He wants to ask you a few questions. Miss Lawrence, you know how I feel about Dan. But this is something I've got to do because it's my job. You're not Miss Lawrence at all. You're Phil Dixon's wife, aren't you? I want Dixon. Where is he? Oh, darling. He's asking the questions, Robbie. Oh, Dan, I didn't want to tell you. I, I didn't want you ever to know. I didn't know how you feel. I made up that story about my husband being killed in the war. Where's Dixon? I don't know. I left him as soon as I found out what he was doing the first time he got in trouble. I haven't seen him in years. The last I heard, there was some trouble in Mexico. Or... Oh, he's out of my life, and I want to keep him out. I hope he's dead. Look, okay. I... That's why I lied to you, Dad. I wanted to believe that he was dead. I didn't like living a lie. Oh, he's always brought me unhappiness, and now he's brought it to me again. I don't know. I don't know where he is, and I don't want to. Now that you've broken down on me up, I, I hope that satisfies you. 
<laughs> Happy Bonnie? I'm sorry, Miss Lawrence. Be seeing you, Dad. Come on, Robbie, it's over. What are you saying? The night I was beaten up, I was taken to the guy who had Towers killed. It was Dixon. You see, I put all the pieces together. Oh, Dan. Oh, Dan, what can I say that you're going to believe? Look, honey. I know what you've been through. Just tell me the truth from here in. That's all I'm asking. I thought he was dead. I really did, Dan. And then he came back and he's been making me help him. He forced me to spot things for him and then he wanted me to help him with you. Oh, I begged him to leave you alone. He promised me he wouldn't hurt you and then... Look what he's done to you. Oh, Dan, what are we going to do? We're going to get out of this. We're going to run away from guys like Runson and Dixon and the rest of them. From now on, it's going to be you and me. Oh, Dan, I'll do anything you say. Dixon wants San Francisco. He can have it. But he'll follow us. No, he won't. Because now we got something on him. We can be happy. Just the two of us. And a lot healthier, honey. I'll go with you any place, any time. We'll get out of here tonight by plane. All right, Dan. Whatever you say. I'll be back in an hour. Get all packed and be ready to go. Oh, Dan. Dan, darling. Be ready to go, honey. I'll get them for you right away. That's mine. This is yours. Hello, Phil. I haven't much time. Gannon knows everything. He'll be back in an hour. He wants me to go away with him. We're getting a plane tonight. Yes, all right, Phil. You'll meet us before we get to the airport. Fine. No, darling, he's not stubborn. He's just a chump. Thanks. Listening in on your conversation just now. I think you ought to know about him. Okay. I'll get Dixon right back.
I thought you hadn't read a detective story in five years. You know, Dan, I think I finally guessed one right. Yeah? Yeah. I kept saying to myself over and over again, Barney Runson, you're a heel. That's what you are. You're nothing but a heel. The way I mistreated that nice Miss Lawrence. You didn't believe her? You don't think I was a big enough dope to go for that story, do you? Dan, forgive me, I didn't know. Oh. I tried to swallow it, it stuck right here. Choked me. And I don't think you're a big enough fool to swallow it either. You're a very smart man, Barney. I'll be seeing you. There's a little errand I gotta take care of. Just a minute, Dan. This is where you step out. I told you I was gonna do it my way. I'm putting you in protective custody. Get moving. All did, Ronson. Rage. Thanks, Al. You take care of Barney. I got something to do. Just a minute. What's the idea? You'll find out. I'm working for Dixon now. Inside, both of you. Come on. Sit down. Somebody gave you a bad character reference on Al. Don't try anything, fellas. This gives me a big edge on you. Take a look at him, Danny. One of your friends, one of the guys you protect. Code of honor and all that stuff. You can buy any of these lice. Let's not start calling each other names. I want to tell you something, Danny. You trust too many people. Like me. Like the clerk at Robbie's apartment. You even trusted Robbie. That's what we get for doing it your way. Never blow a whistle, you say. Never yell copper, you say. Nice work, Al. Oh, Phil. Barney. What a coincidence. Yes. Cozy little group, isn't it? You know, Barney, you might have gone on for years. Retired. Drawn a pension. You're a lot more important now than you were six years ago. Ten minutes from now, I'll be still more important. Robbie told me you were taking a trip. I dropped in to say so long. She didn't come over. This sort of thing upsets her. That's what I figured. All right, let's go. Nobody's ever been big enough to get away with this, Dixon. Nobody up till now. All right, the boys are waiting. Winded, Barney. I'm a little out of condition. Hello, Collins. This is Renson. Get a squad car and an ambulance over to Gannon's place and get him over here fast. Uh, pick up Robbie Lawrence and the desk clerk at her apartment and take him in. Right. Easy, boy. We'll have you in the hospital in a few minutes. Look out, Barney. I'm glad you did that, Dixon. This is for a friend of mine. Okay, 
fella. That hole should be in my chest. That bullet was meant for me. What a coincidence. Danny looked at some things the wrong way. But when he finally saw them the right way, it was too late. Yeah, it's the same town. A little bigger, a little busier, but a little lonelier. I'm still around because I had a good friend.